Welcome back to Brush Up Your Game, and today uh, Tristan and I are ranking the factions in Star Trek Attack Wing. So Tristan, welcome back. Howdy. Howdy. And uh, you know, I uh, I was thinking with all 14 of these factions, it, it's, you know, so, some are obvious, you know, they're low, they're bad, they're not they they're not deep uh some are easy because they're up at the top and they're really good um but this is just i, I think there's some intrigue here so uh i have pulled either a, a card or a ship for everything and, and we'll we'll see how all of this goes so i'm looking forward to this yeah um i kick things off at number 14 with q uh, it's not that Q is a bad faction, but when there's arguably two cards that get run, uh, Q either is an admiral or a captain, typically is the admiral, and think fast. And boy, think fast doesn't even see that much play. Uh, uh, two cards does not a faction build. So uh, Yeah, it's, it's less a ranking, is more just like a incomplete grade. Yeah. Uh, just, it's a fun little side note in the game, and that's about where it is you know they exist yeah and uh, don't get me wrong i'm happy they exist but uh yeah i i can't go and be like oh yay the queue no i i think a lot could be done to build up the queue um we've got like q jr amanda rogers uh riker was a queue for a moment uh, we've got all the Q, the Q judges from Voyager, um, the whole yeah, Q the continuum. Civil War. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Civil War. Um, fun fact, I had a great uncle who was an actor in the Q Civil War. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, Harv Presnell, old actor from long, long ago. But, yeah. Uh, and my number 13, then, is the Bajoran faction. Mm-hmm. And uh, this this comes down, I, I think they have some interesting cards. Kira is a captain, certainly a good captain. Uh, the Ratosha, not a terrible ship, but they don't have depth. They uh, they need a faction pack, uh, is really what it comes down to. Um, uh, Bajorans and my next two, are they all fall into the, they need a faction pack. Uh, and it, it's just, the Bajorans, I... I they have the weakest ships. So I, I find myself going, hmm, I don't, I don't know. There's not much I can do. Uh, and even what should be tricks for a, uh, you know, a guerrilla force, uh, they, they don't have those types of tricks that I would expect from them. So, yeah, I find Bajoran tough here. Yeah, I mean, they have some intriguing idea. I mean, Kieran Nerys here is, is definitely the, the best Bajoran card. Uh, has value in Federation builds, too. Um, I, I like Phaser Strike. I, I think it's it's an interesting, interesting concept mm-hmm. to have a, a secondary weapon that affects the captain's skill. Um, their ships are very maneuverable. There's there's uh, options and upgrades to allow them to, to fly through planets without penalty to attack from 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 within a planet. Um, so there are things there that I really like, but you're right. They need a faction pack very badly. Um, I, I, we recently ran a, a event, uh, a one off event in, in Fremont where you had to choose a faction that was rarely played in the game. Bajoran was one, one choice. And I, I tried building a Bajoran fleet. I was very close to running one just for fun, uh, but it just did not stack up to, to some of the other options. And, um, I, I would love to see some, some revisions there. The only saving grace that Bajorans have is they do have DS9. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But even then, it, that's such an expensive piece and it pays the way oversized base penalty um, in addition to being overpriced for what it should be in today's game. It's just, yeah, I, I can't justify it. Yeah, every time I see someone run DS9, you think it's going to do better than it does, and it really <laughs> doesn't do very well. So, Yeah. Uh, my number 12 is Kazon. There we go. Uh, and again, Kazon have some interesting ships. I like the Relora Sankur. 
Um, I like uh, even the Nistrum Raider, the, the little small ship. They have good abilities. They don't fly terribly. Uh, it's just they, they don't have... They don't really have good captains. Um, they don't have great upgrades. There, there's not a lot to like with them as a faction. I, I kind of feel like they got one good ship, and that was the end of things. Uh, I think a lot could be done to make Kazon better, uh, starting with giving Kazon access to Voyager, uh, with a, mm -hmm. a Kazon version of Voyager, and I think um, just better... Better named abilities. Uh, and I, I do think there's some minor Kazon that could be brought in, even uh, bringing the Trabe in as a, a Kazon mm. addition, you know, just lump them all in together. Uh, but there's other Kazon sects that, that could work um, that, that just haven't had enough cards brought into the game. And I think all together that, that it would enhance, sorry, that would enhance them. Yeah, again, there's just not enough here. Um, their best ships are essentially slightly better versions of the Excelsior class. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, personally, this is one of those factions where I'm not quite sure who it's supposed to appeal to in the game. I mean, the Kazan have never been a fan favorite. No. Um, it just, uh, just seems like a, a weird choice uh, other than just to fill some sort of Voyager quota, but I mean, hopefully we'll, we'll see something more from them with that. We'll, we'll make them uh, a viable option in the game. Mm -hmm. Now, number 11 for me. Ooh, dissension in the ranks. Uh, I went with the Zindi. And I've been playing a fair amount of Zindi lately with uh, the missions. And I, I like Zindi. They've got some, some cool tricks, um, some, some tricks that let them... Disable cards, discard cards. Uh, the Weapon Zero is a great ship. Don't get me wrong. Um, it needs help, especially in Zindi Pure, uh, even with Kaifed Ammon, sir. Uh, they are one of the few minor factions that has an Admiral. I'll give them that. Yeah. Um, but for me, there's there's just not... Hmm, that, it's depth, again. Uh, you know, you get Trellium D. That's a nice... Uh, enhancement card, but I looked at um, insectoids because that, that's the first mission. It, it's insectoids. Only one ship has a crew. It's one of the named ships. The other named ship doesn't have a crew slot, and the generics don't have a crew slot. Zindi don't have enough good cheap cards. All their cards are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, when a faction is very expensive across the board. I, I just, I struggle to enjoy it as a faction. I think there's good ideas here. I think it's got a good foundation, but I keep saying it needs a faction pack. Yeah, no, they, they uh, yeah, it sounds like a broken record, but yeah, the, these first couple of, of factions, they, they definitely need a faction pack to, to, to be worthwhile. Uh, and the same thing with the with, with the uh, um, the bio ships here. Um, you know, the generic is good. Um, there's not uh, not much beyond that. I mean, there's there's some decent tech. I don't think they have any good captains. No. Um, they're just to to be fair. I mean, I, I do see the generic bio ship run fairly fairly you know, commonly in, in, in competitive matches, because it is a, a beast of a ship stat wise. Um, but beyond that, there's just really nothing going for it. It's hard to build faction pure because everything, the ships are so expensive for one, uh, that, you know, if you can build a three ship fleet, you're really thin on upgrades. So mm. they, uh, they could use a, a recosting and use some additional card support as well. You really, it really could. Um, okay, I'll let you talk about Zindi. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think the again of all the factions here, eight four seven two, the Kazan, the Bajorans, uh, I, I would most like to see a Zindi faction pack, maybe because I again I have a, a bit of a soft spot for for Enterprise. Um, 
I think they have some some interesting concepts. Obviously, Weapon Zero, that could that could use a re-release because it's almost impossible to find if you want to want to own one. Um, but it's a decent ship. Uh, it's very defensive if you want to go that route. They have particle beam weapon, which can go on any other ships and, and boost the attack value. It's not unique or anything, so that's kind of nice. Uh, Degra is a nice captain. They have some decent attacking ships. Uh, uh, they lack in shields, but um, you know you can do a decent swarm with them. Is in the pure, but it's not super strong. It's not going to hold up to the top three, four, five factions here. So they they definitely need some some more depth to to really flesh them out. But I. I I like them a lot. I think there's some unique ideas there. Mm -hmm. No, uh, yeah, they they have the they have good bones. I think that's yeah. the way I can put it. They got good bones. Um, I, Mirror is a faction I have a I have a lot of thoughts on, and, and they range from they're pretty good to we need to just blow the whole system up. Um. Mirror needs to like be completely rethought. And I don't know where I totally fall. Um, I could probably be swayed in a lot of different directions, but um, that's not the topic of right now. The topic is, well, where does Mirror fit as a faction? And I, I think it falls right here. I think there's factions that do a lot of stuff better. Mirror definitely has really good ships, but it's they're limited. And the ships that are really, really good tend to be dual factioned. Uh, now, I don't think that makes them really, really good because they're dual factioned, but I think that it certainly helps. And Mirror doesn't have the best captains. They have some good crew, but not all the good crew. They have maybe a good weapon here or there but like not the best depth it, it mirrors this perplexing conundrum of a faction and i just am left going what do i do with it i i have a feeling one faction box does not fix mirror i think it takes two additional releases to really make mirror mm -hmm something competitively viable yeah i mean you know mirrors unlike a lot of these other factions is just kind of a, a random well i guess independent similar to or just a random conglomeration of of things i mean there this isn't really the the mirror universe as as uh as you refer to in in, in the show it's all these different alternate timelines um mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, you know, there's there's kind of again there's there's a disconnect. Um, it, but I mean, it, it could be more cohesive. Uh, it's just that uh, for whatever reason, uh, Whiskers hasn't been able to develop to develop it that way. So, I mean, in general, weapons, not really good weapons. There are some really fantastic crew, but there's a lot of not so much. There's a couple of really good captains. There's a couple. There's some really really good ship abilities. Um, you know that are are up there with the best of any faction um but then mirror also has maybe some of the the dregs of of upgrades too um, among everything so it's just all over the board um and uh just when I, when I even think about it, it just feels like this confusion mishmash of things uh it kind of turns me off from the faction in general yeah i, I... And I guess the difference for me between Mirror and Independent, even though they're both mishmashes, is I know what the heck Independent's supposed to be doing. I don't know what Ind what Mirror's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's the challenge. Um, yeah. My number nine, not not too different from Mirror's, uh, from Mirror 11. It, it, it's Species 8472. I, I like it. The fact that you could have one generic ship and that alone is worthwhile. Uh, and that it needed to be its own faction because it is so different. It could not simply go into independent. And that feels okay. Whereas Kazon feels like it should have been part of independent. 
Yeah. And I mean, I know it's a sub faction and, and whatever, but you know what? It's got its own faction symbol. We're talking about it as its own faction. Species at least feels right being it's by itself, even though it does not have great captains, even though the only real usable tech come on a blind booster box that is ridiculous to try to get a hold of. Uh, yes, desperately, we need a faction box for species. I don't care if it's half a faction box and you want to go Borg and species. Fine, give me that. But give me two new bio ships. Um, put in bio ship Delta and Gamma. We'll have fun. It'll work. It'll be great. But uh, I, I still, I still like the ships. I think Beta is useful. I think Omega can be fun at times, and Alpha still has a place. So the name ships aren't hideous, but. Um, they're so situational there. Uh, you really got to plan for them to be that. All right. Uh, number eight time. Yes. Yep. All right. Yeah. Ferengi. Um, yeah, they kind of started as a joke. Um, but Ferengi have enough kind of cool stuff. Uh, the Lauren's bird of prey is, is, kind of the top example of what they can do but quark also a, a solid card uh, weapon ports has seen its competitive moments in the sun and um you know the, i think there's there's enough good things that exist in ferengi chemocyte the they got the mm -hmm. first really really good photon torpedoes um, yeah i guess fed had some good photon torpedoes and klingons did too but Ferengi photon torpedoes really stood out as as good ones that people wanted to run. Uh, they've always had like interesting niche cards, and that's okay as a faction to me. They don't need to be the be all end all of everything, but they have a good identity. They they have smugglers, they have disruption, they have things that are gonna gum up the works. It works. Ferengi aren't gonna be the top five powerhouse. But they're also not the worst of the worst. Yeah, I mean, I think Ferengi are, you know, they, they have some really good cards that that fit cross-faction wise. You know, Quark, Torpedoes, Chemocyte, Learns Bird of Prey uh, with, with Klingons. As a standalone faction, I think they're very weak. Um, you know, if, if, if the criteria here was just based upon how does the faction operate pure, uh, Ferngi just don't have enough firepower, oh, no. um, you know, uh, on their own. But I, again, I think it kind of fits thematically, you know, the Ferengi were, uh, you know, in universe, they are kind of the go between for the, for the major powers. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're playing both sides, things like that. So, um, and you know, the, the top two, three, four Ferengi cards are just almost, you know, uh, must have guaranteed to show up. Uh, you know, in, in a in a tournament, some you know, that that ilk. So yeah, the top I'd say the top four Ferengi cards are in the top fifty attack wing cards. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So that says a lot. All right, hey, more alignment there. Yeah, uh, seven the Vulcans, uh, and boy, what a difference that faction pack made for the Vulcans. Th this is proof mm -hmm. of what a faction pack can do to a faction because I think before the Vulcan f faction pack, they were uh, were they below Kazon? Maybe they were certainly right around Kazon because uh, I don't think they were above Zindi. They definitely weren't above yeah. species, not for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I just ran a. Uh, again, going back to the the, the one-off tourney we just did, uh, the faction I did run over Bajoran was Vulcan, but I think of all the cards I ran, only one of them didn't come out of that faction pack. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it just it shows just how strong it was. Um, with that pack, with the scan, uh, you know, shenanigans that they can pull off, uh, 
they're a lot of fun. And, and, and I think on their own, they, they can, um, they're not going to win most of the time against some of the bigger powers, but I think, uh, I think they can put up a, a bit of a fight. Um, and of course they, they synergize great with the Federation. Um, they do. Uh, yeah. Again, one of those questions as to do, do we really need a separate Vulcan faction? Um, but again, it plays into that, that enterprise era. I can see where, where it comes, uh, where, where it comes out. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, I, as someone who likes to play with scan tokens, it, it's a lot of fun. I, I, I like that flavor to them. Yeah. Um, I, I will say having played against Vulcan faction pack stuff in the enterprise missions, uh, it's totally broken now. And, um, those missions need to be redone if they're going to stay balanced. Not that the missions were ever the high point of balance, but yeah. uh, the Vulcans just, everything tipped in favor of the Vulcans. It's, yeah, it's not even close. They just have too much good stuff now. All right. Uh, number six for me. Okay. I think we've, well, I'll start with Dominion. So for me, Dominion, I, they have some good things. Um, Gomadred, Dukat, Dukat's Bird of Prey. They've got the ability to swarm Jemadar battle cruisers. Oh, well, not battle cruisers. The attack ships, the bugs. I like it. But to me, it always feels like Dominion have kind of lacked the um, their own identity. And they they feel like Federation light. They mm. they've got the battleships, but they don't have the same captain skill. They've got the ability to swarm, kind of like Klingons, but they don't have the defense dice. They so to me, without that true identity, they they just don't quite do things as well as other factions. They have two two of the best admirals with Madred and uh, Enabrin or Anabrin Tain. Yeah, yeah. um, but you can only run one of them. I understand you can run Madred as a captain, but um, there's just, there's some things. I, I love Dominion. I've played Dominion lots and lots. Uh, I know uh, one of my frequent commentators, uh, Christopher, he's, more of a Dominion fanboy than I am. Um, and he's going to probably eviscerate me that I put Dominion at six. How dare I? But uh, I just, I, I, I need to see more depth from them. They fell behind because other factions got enhancements from Alliance and, yeah. um, and more recent faction packs. The Dominion have not gotten a faction pack since 2018. No, that, well, okay. They got Ducat's bird of prey. Yeah. But, yeah. That was uh 2020, 21. Something like that. But that's still not. And that was, sorry. That was, a. that was the, um, Cardassian union pack. But yeah. even that just it it didn't have the big impact that I think people were looking for. I don't I don't see people running Dominion. It didn't tip the the meta towards Dominion. It it didn't I don't think it did what it should have done. Not the same way that um that other ships got the advantages that they, or other factions got what they got. So I, I've, Wait. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fair enough. I, I'm not a big fan of them myself, so I'm not going to put up a, a big, def- <laughs> a big defense of the dominion. But. It used to be the big four and dominion, but dominion were always number four in the big four. Mm-hmm. Sure. I think they've fallen behind. This, it's just my take on it. Well, they're a little bit higher for me, so I'll kind of save some of my thoughts for that. Um, 
here I have uh, independent at six. I, I think they're they have a, a little more identity than than mirror. They definitely have a lot of strengths. Again, it's coming from a lot of different angles, uh, so there's a mismatch of ideas. But uh, well, with captured, any anyone because becomes independent. So yeah. I mean, that's a powerful card. Uh, you, you have the Gorn with their disruptor bombardment. Um, you know, the Herogen, uh, I think have some interesting, uh, uh, you know, ideas behind it. I, I honestly, I, I would rather swap out Kazon and Herogen. I'd rather have the Herogen be, uh, their own sub faction and have a Kazon you know, under the independent banner. But I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of things that, you know, there's, uh, there, there's something for everyone with the independent. Uh, and there's something nice with just kind of playing the, uh, you know, the kind of the, the mercenary outsider, you know, you don't care about the greater galactic politics. You just want to mess things up and, 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 you know, and, and raid your opponent. That's, that's what the independence about. It's, it's, uh, it, it can be fun. Um, and I think it definitely can hold its own, uh, even with some of the bigger one, bigger guns, uh, with the right build. Yeah. I'm with you there. Uh, I think Andorians are bringing a lot to the party. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Vidians are really pulling their weight. Yeah. I don't think Tholians no. are pulling their weight. Tholians could definitely use a, some revisions. I think they could be really, really powerful. I think the, the Tholian web idea is is really intriguing, but um, just doesn't work right now. No, but it, it has potential. But we can't yeah. judge things on potential. But I think independent is varied enough, and Kiana Prime even has potential. Uh, yeah. th- there's enough little one-off cards here and there too. Section thirty-one isn't bad. It's it's an interesting little play that adds in, um, and there's there's little there's little bits and pieces here and there that just help independent. Uh, even Khan's Reliant, all the all the Khan Singh cards. Khan, yeah, Khan, um, yeah. And how how much does Khan get used? Khan gets used more than most things that come before Independent on both of our lists. Yeah, for sure. I, I I mean, one of my big arguments is Khan may Khan gets used more. Khan and Captured get used more than anything from the Dominion faction. Do I would uh, do Cotsper to pray, but you could argue that's also Klingon. So I'll grant you that. Yeah. But I think lifetime of the game. I know it's not fair to compare something that came out almost ten years ago versus something that came out two years ago. But still, <laughs> I, I do think people reach for captured and they reach for con and they go, "Ooh, good stuff." Uh, I mean, they're both great. Yeah, they're yeah. top flight cards. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to guess your number five is Borg. You are right. Hey. Borg. Video. Who needed video? It's like a Borg cube appears. So I know there are some people that really love Borg. Um, I just don't get it. Uh, to me, again, they, they don't have a ton of flavor to them um even if you can convince me that they are a competitive i'm not, not arguing that, that they're not competitive in the game my personal opinion i think i've mentioned this before is that borg should not be their own faction um the borg should be this you know nameless faceless entity that uh if it if they are part of the game um they shouldn't be controlled by anybody. My, my thought would be, um, you know, if you want to have Borg, that's fine. You have a Borg ship. You have to spend your own points in your fleet to have this Borg ship. But once it's on the board, it operates by some sort of AI that it just moves to, towards the closest target, whether it's you or your opponent, and it attacks whatever's closest to it. And that way it's it, it, it just menaces everybody. Mm. Um, the idea that someone controls the Borg just doesn't jive with me um doesn't feel thematic for star trek um i you know but they're five because they are very powerful but they're not going to get any any more points with me for those reasons so i understand i i i hear your arguments um 
I I think a game designed from scratch should have the Borg exist and be a game element, not a player element. That being said, it's really fun to put a Borg cube on the board and go look <laughs> at this massive thing that I have. And once you destroy that, I get to launch a sphere from it. Or any ship from it, the way that they made the support vehicle work. That was just a cool aspect. Um, second of five, you know, Lore's Rogue Borg. Um, that was a cool aspect. Um, lots of lots of good. The, the faction pack that turned around uh, Borg drones not always being the sole factor of captain skill that we could have printed captain skill. Um, mm -hmm. And then Borg drones just get to work um, and, and carry out effects. I, I think has helped a lot. Um, and I think now you can make a legitimate argument that some of the more powerful Borg ships are Voyager and, um, well, that that is Voyager. Uh, the sphere is always going to be powerful, and the octahedron, and and you know the oversized cube. But um, it's they are they're a force to be reckoned with. Um, I I'm glad that they're not as omnipresent as they used to be. Um, because there was a time if you weren't running Borg, you were losing. And I, I'm grateful that that is not the case anymore. So. So yeah, I guess that, that, that's my issue is that they, you know, they, they had to nerf them when, I mean, in reality, they should be really powerful, but they should be. Um, so it's, it's almost silly now that they, they can't attack, you know, they can do 360 attacks, but not at range three. It just, the, Anyway, uh, I, 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 I'll let it, I'll let it slide at this one. I'll, I'm going to drop it, but let go, let it go. Um, four for me, a dominion. Uh, I mean, I, I get where you're coming from. I, I, again, my, myself, not a huge fan of dominion. Uh, and I guess in general, I'm not a, not a fan of the, the bad guy factions here, but, um, I mean, I do think they, they have a little bit of flavor. They're, they're very synergistic, you know, especially when you get into the Gemadar ships. And even a lot of the Galar classes, you know, when they're within range of one another, they can, uh, you know, give each other actions or extra attack dice mm -hmm. or redirect attacks, things like that. Um, Gold Madrid and uh, Anabrin Tain are, are both fantastic. You have Dukat's Bird of Prey, which is arguably a Klingon ship. I think they, I think they have a lot going for them. I, I do feel like I, I see them I show, see them show up quite a bit on Fremont. Uh, they definitely have some followers. Uh, I, I think faction pure they probably suffer. Um, I think though as an element of a of a, of a mixed fleet they can be very effective um, because you can take take the, the best parts of of that and they have some really really nice parts. Do do they need another faction pack? I would agree. Yeah, um, it would have been nice to. To I think some some fans have argued for Alliance Part Two and Three. They, you know, were asking for you know, can we get some upgrade cards for the for the Dominion, uh, you know, ships and things like that to play with in in Attack Wing. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. So um, they could definitely use something like that. But I think they, I think they still hold their own. Um, you know, it's. Uh, I think they, they still have a bit of an edge over the board and and, uh, and everything that came before them. So, on the note of alliance stuff, I, I think that the um, the elite ships, whatever class you want, I think you could almost make those named ships. All you're missing are the upgrade bars. Uh, yeah, I, I mean they're right there. They're official game components. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's work that has to be done, but to the custom community, just take every, every, uh, ability that was printed on an elite, slap a name on it, give it an upgrade bar. The stats are there. The points are done. Uh, 
uh, I guess the brain need repointing repointed, but uh, yeah, it's, it's there. It's not like the, the wheel does not have to be reinvented here. It, it's all set up. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, other things can still exist. And, and I think the Dominion need more than just new ships. I think new ships are a start. Um, I think the Sona would help a lot because it gives a new ship class, but it also brings in very good captains and some crew and some tech that would help give it a different personality, but also enhance some, um, some flavor. Yeah, I know. I've, I've seen people clamoring for the Sona. Um, uh, don't don't know. I mean, if, if all the of all the pie in the sky things that might happen, I think that's more realistic than most. But uh, it would it would add a nice uh, uh, some nice uh, uh, pieces to to the Dominion. It would. All right. Well, the the top three are the three from you know, the original three powers. And uh, I don't think there's much secret. I, I think there might be some dissension in the two, three. Number one was never going yeah. to be in doubt here, but no. uh, number three, ooh, we did swap them. Um, I, I had a feeling beca only because I know how much you love Klingons, uh, that Klingons might've gone for year two. So I guess we can, uh, we can, fill this out yeah here. but yeah. um for me klingons had been a very strong two for a long time uh what dropped it is the maneuverability that romulan cloaking device brought to the game um and i know those can cross faction they can move over um but i think that Romulans got enough of a boost with Alliance 3 plus their faction pack that now I'm starting to see the the best parts of the animated series are are coming in. Um Vendorian Spy is mm. is becoming even better for Romulans. Um Twilight's Wrath is certainly a solid ship and the Scimitar is only getting better and the Scimitar has that sixth die that the Klingons can't match, uh, not without extensive upgrades. And, and I think there's there's enough there that I like with Romulans. Denatra got better. Um, and, and I think there's still room to grow for both factions, which is encouraging. Um, Klingons have more depth. And... I appreciate that about Klingons. I, I very much struggled here, and I, I went back and forth for a long time. Klingons have have better ships, um, at least a better lineup of ships. Romulans take the top ship, but Klingons take that like two through six, two through eight, something like that in terms of their next great ships. Klingons can swarm. Romulans can't. Um, but Romulans have better technology. Romulans have as good of weapons, I think, at this point. And I almost start to say Romulans have better captains. It's close, though, for me, in terms of captains. But I think I end up leaning more towards Romulans with captains, um, you know, between Denatra, Laris, um, even Shinzon at times, Sela. I, I like what they bring to the table. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a tough, it's a really tough debate, and I don't think there's a right answer. I, I think it comes down to personal preference and play style. I mean, the, the, the Rhinelands got a tremendous boost from the Tal Shiar faction pack, uh, especially considering the, the previous faction pack is almost unobtainable um, at this point. Um, 
Alliance Part Three definitely added some really interesting cards, and and I'm hoping. Uh, I I don't know if they I think they recently got put into Utopia or maybe very soon. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to get to play with some of those virtually um, in the near future. Um, and you're right. I think I think it's a back and forth thing. Um, they to to me I think the maybe the Ramid at this point have some higher highs. Um, but I think the Klingons just have a better overall average. Like I said, they the, the Romulans lack a smaller swarm ship. They don't have anything good on the on the lower end. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I'd love to see a bird of prey made viable and, and, and to see something reprinted there, just not happening. The D7, yeah, I mean the the talent is okay, but um, you know, so so Klingons still you know, can swarm like nothing else. They uh, captains, you have you have some pretty decent Romulan captains, but I think that the Dahar masters are still kind of, to my mind, you know, when you have all three of them on the board, they're they're hard to beat in terms of uh, of skill, um, and you know, uh, the the hardest thing with with uh, Klingon captains is deciding which which core you want to pick. I mean, they're also good. Um, the the one downside I think to the Klingons in my mind is they don't have a ton of great secondary weapons. Now with disruptor sweep, that's maybe changing. Um, torpedo fuselage is obviously up there, but a- after those two, there's not a lot. To, you know, the we see the Romulans, you know, the, they have ways to to pump up their primary weapon attack with additional phaser arrays or s- forward disruptor banks, things like that. Federation does as well. Klingons don't, and they have some pretty good base base attack values there and you can boost it with uh with galron and 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 some other tricks and stuff but um it it will be nice to to see something else there they have two really good tech cards uh uh, reinforced hull and and klingon cloaking device but you're right after that uh there there might be one or two more but you know the the, the romans probably have an edge there in tech so again i think comes down to you know uh whether you you know uh, want to play the game honorably with uh, with a, a lot of respect for your opponent, or whether you want to play Romulans, um, that's just <laughs> not how it comes out. But uh, but I mean, like I said, uh, the the Romulans is uh, Romulans are where I, I like to crib all the good tech. You know, um, putting Romulan cloaking device uh, under Quark on a Klingon ship, that's kind of my no brainer at this point, right? So. Um, there, there's there's positives on both sides. There are. Uh, it's yeah. I it, it was a it was a tough choice, and I yeah. I I don't know. I I don't think there's a right answer. I I think both factions are very good. Uh, that's that's what it comes down to for me. They are both just very good. I, I think. You know as the game continues that you know who takes the lead there is probably going to be come down to who has the most recent releases for cards you know like um with blood oath i mean with the dahar masters boom klingons were were number two you mm-hmm. know no doubt with tal shiar now it's you know it's a lot closer and, and romulans might take the lead um you know it's, it's going to keep swinging back and forth and that's just kind of the nature of the uh, of those two factions, I think. So, what happens when we get the Klingon Civil War faction pack? That's two part. That's half Klingon and half Romulan. I would love to see that. Uh, I mean, I think there, there is a you know, there's a potential for a Duras build, right? Where it's you know Klingon Romulan. You already have a little bit there. I mean, one of the Duras captains can uh, version captain versions can hide uh, some some Romulan elite talents and things like that. Yeah. Um, there, isn't there a Klingon Romulan alliance card or something like that too? So um, I think that would be very intriguing. Um, I would love to see that as a you know you get two faction packs. You get uh, you get a Federation one that has Picard's fleet. You know you may, maybe you throw in a uh, a new Excelsior or a new named Excelsior in there because uh, uh, which I can't remember which uh, which Excelsior was, was uh, class was at that one, but they're um the excalibur i know was the ambassador but anyway lexington maybe but yeah that in a in a a, a klingon romulan faction pack that'd be a lot of fun mm-hmm. um, yeah um, and there goes the dominion getting left behind again <laughs> eh, i'm okay with that yeah 
Um, I don't know. Do we need to say much about Federation at this point? If there's something you want to do in this game, the Federation can do it. Even Cloak. Um, yeah, I mean, even to, to some extent. Not um, not great, but they can no. do it. Uh, they can they can they can censor echo. There's more than a few ways for them to censor echo. Uh, I mean, they 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 they're just the the Swiss Army knife of the game. Um, you want a powerful attack ship, that can do that. You want a super defensive ship, that can do that. Um, you want a swarm, well, with the sabers, now Fed can do that too. Uh, so, um, and rightfully so. I mean, they are the they are the main character, the protagonist throughout most of the the series. Um, Maybe, maybe it's a little little annoying, uh, you know, that they get all the, the fun toys and, and you know, the, the Boy Scouts of space. But um, I mean, that's what that's what all that's what draws all of us into the game. So, yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, we're you know, I can call myself a Klingon player, but secretly I, I play a lot of Federation, too. So. They are jack of all trades, master of almost all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, one of my hopes when, I guess maybe it's a retrospective hope, but with the streaming services and even short treks, it's, I, I hoped that we would see a show done from a perspective that was not the Federation. And it didn't even have to involve the Federation at all. Picard season one might be the closest we're going to get. It's the closest, but yeah. I mean, how cool would it be to see a Klingon, a Klingon main perspective against with their war with the Kinshaya? I mean, that's just an example, but mm -hmm. you know, you do something like that as, as like a one season thing or a, I mean, didn't the Klingons and Gorn have a war at some point? Uh, I'm sure they probably did. There, we, you, could, you could have a, uh, a season on the Great Tribble Hunt. Um, there you go. Or even a short trek yeah. on that. Maybe a long trek on that. Yeah, yeah. there'd be a follow-up to uh, the, tr the trouble with Edward. Yeah. Um, I, it's just... Because stuff like that would, one, give us fodder for you know, fleshing out these other factions, but, uh, two would really start to tell stories other than Federation centric ones. I mean, to be fair, discovery season one, probably focus, focus a fair amount on, on, on Klingon culture and politics. It may not have been the Klingons we wanted. Um, but uh, maybe more so than, then well ds9 did quite a bit too ds9 but, did a lot yeah. and ds9 had yeah. their cling or their um ferengi episodes too i mean ds9 was uh yeah to to, to they, they did so much more to elevate all the minor factions i mean that you know to see what they did with the bajorans and the cardassians you know they, they were barely fleshed out from next generation uh, -huh. uh, you know, Klingons just a little bit more, even the Romulans towards the end. I mean, you know, the, the, even they got their, their layers of nuance, whereas in next generation, they're just, you know, kind of the, the standard evil scheming people. Uh, we saw a little bit more to them and yeah, I mean, that, that to me is the gold standard, uh, of, of what you can do with, uh, with, with, uh, the right, uh, right producers and writers and stuff on a show. But, uh, I, yeah, it would be interesting to have, like, an anthology series or maybe focus on, uh, you know, the different species and cultures and stuff like that. Um, and uh, from from an outside Federation perspective, I think I, I really think Picard, as much as maybe it wasn't what we all wanted in the first season, even maybe the third season isn't what we all wanted. We just we got all the fan service. But season one, I thought was really nice in that it set up kind of a sense of what it's like outside of the bubble that is Starfleet in the yes. Federation. Like, you know, next generation was the kind of the peak of, you know, this is what it's like on the flagship of, of the Federation. Everything is, you know, 
rainbows and gumdrops, and then you get out to the edge where you have the Fenris Rangers, and not everything is the utopia, and, and uh, you know, Picard kind of gets uh, gets an eye opener with that. I thought it was interesting from that. It was it was kind of dark, and a lot of people would say, well, it's not that's not really Star Trek, but um, I, I think it's you know it's it's an aspect we've never seen. We've always seen the stories from the bridge of the the most advanced ship in the fleet, uh, and it's a big galaxy, and not everyone has access to those amenities. And mm-hmm. I, I think it's it's interesting in that from that perspective. Yeah, I, I was thinking you could almost do it as um, hmm, kind of like a, a soci- sociology class, um, mm. but like this renowned, a, a, a Trek day Jane Goodall who went to live with all these different cultures and now is lecturing at the academy, telling the tales of how all of these different cultures live. And you just cut scenes between the academy and their adventures on this planet. Well, well, hear me out here. So we we can do a prequel series with a, a young Picard with uh, Galen, his anthropology professor. And it's kind of like young Indiana Jones. Okay. And they just go, they go to these different, uh, you know, different planets and, and cultures and, and, and run into crazy stuff. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, we'll get Sean Patrick Flannery to, to play Picard and uh, we'll be all good. Sounds great. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Do it. Um, or, even at this point, a follow up with Vosh. Yeah, what, what's she up to these days? Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, she. I, uh, I know everyone's too old, sadly. But uh, well, yeah, uh, you know, animated. I guess. What was she? Did she show up in Lower Decks? No, that was somebody. That was some other archaeology. Uh, uh, archaeologist that, uh, um, briefly Mariner was employed with yeah uh, yeah so that would have been a great great way to get Vosh in there but yeah say la vie all right well uh that's our retrospective on uh factions and several other things connected to track um where did we go wrong that's always for you to judge but uh there you have it uh, I don't think anyone can make an argument that Q Continuum is anything but a footnote in the history of a tackling. Still fun, though. Fun little pack. All right. Uh, any last words there, Tristan? Uh, live long and prosper. Yes, that was the Vulcan representative card. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Appreciate your time. Until next time, keep brushing up your game. Take care.